Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm gonna walk you through the basic building techniques with our Starforge core pieces. We've taken these pieces in a bold new direction where everything is a 360 degree sculpt so you can use all sides. This lets us build in ways that were never possible before. Let's dive in and take a look. First, let's take a look at all the core pieces. It's important to note that these are prototypes so when they're factory finished, biscuit slots will be a little tighter and some of the textures will be changed slightly. Start here with the two by two alpha floor. So as the name implies, this has a two inch by two inch footprint, half an inch thick. It has biscuit slots on all four sides. Uh, this lets us insert our flat biscuit pegs and connect pieces uh, for some advanced building techniques, cantilevering out, uh, or you can pre-build things into larger chunks. It has one inch squares uh, sculpted in there as a floor grading. So if you're doing tactical movement, you can see where your, uh, your minis are. Uh, and like all the core pieces here, it uses a 360 degree sculpt, so it has texture on all sides. It's important to note that we've completely resculpted the bottom of this. It'll look something like this. It has an anchor magnet in the middle, so there'll be an embedded uh, rare earth magnet in there, so it'll stick to our metal terrain trays for secure building and quick elevation. Next, we have the one by two alpha floor. So almost identical to the two by two, except it has a one inch by two inch footprint, same half inch thick. It's got biscuit slots on all sides. And the final texture will be similar to this on the bottom. And it has an anchor magnet in the middle. This is the two by two alpha trap door floor. Same footprint as the two by two floor, just two inches by two inches half inch thick. The key feature here is it takes our blast door insert. So you can use that as a trap door. You can use it just as a floor panel. It is double sided like all the pieces. This one has slightly different texture on here. And if you want to change out the inserts, we have the exposed cable inserts. You can do something like that. And of course you can put it on the bottom as well. So you could remove the hatch and reveal that for repairs. We also have hex field insert the uh, final will be a little more translucent than this for like a uh, force field sort of effect, uh, or maybe it's a transporter or the like. We have our first wall. This is the alpha straight wall. So it has a two inch by two inch footprint, same half inch thick floor. Its entire height is two inches high. So the wall is an inch and a half. It has the one inch squares sculpted in there. And the wall is set back from the floor, so there's plenty of space. So not only for your 25 millimeter bases, but also you can get 32 millimeter bases in there. So you could have two rows of uh, Space Marines abreast in a hallway of these. Design-wise, the sort of the signature look of these pieces is this hull overhang, right? So we have this curved overhang to imply it's a corridor of a spaceship or a tight base or bunker, or something of the sort. It has these wires that run through a bunch of the pieces so that if you build the pieces together, you have some nice visual flow connecting them. They look like they belong together side by side. It is a 360 sculpt, so there's texture on all sides. There's four biscuit slots all the way around. It is designed to look like interior and the inside, so there's a lot of buttons and controls. It feels like it's the inside as well as the metal grating for the inside of a ship. And then if you flip it around upside down, it's supposed to feel like an exterior, right? These are the armored plates on a spaceship, or this is a cargo container, or a uh, reinforced bunker, or some such. There are, the one inch squares are implied up here for tactical movement. It will have an anchor magnet embedded in there. And this final texture will change uh, slightly. We're trying to make the design super cohesive so all the exterior sides of the pieces look really good together. This is the Alpha Corner. So it has the same footprint as two inches by two inches. It's two inches high. It has half inch thick floor, has biscuit slots on all four sides. It has the same hull curve overhang there, as well as the continuous cabling on the sides. Same look, it's got the, the uh, one inch square sculpted in there. Looks like interior on this side. You flip it upside down. It feels like exterior on the outside. You'll have the embedded anchor magnet there, and you see the one inch uh, squares in the sculpt. 
This is the freestanding alpha door wall. Generally, this will be used on top of a floor like this, so it will work in line with walls, so you can build a uh, door in line with your build. Of course, it's freestanding, so you can put it anywhere as well as against a, uh, a building if you want. I like it is designed so that it will take the same inserts that we use in the trapdoor floor, so you can put the blast door in there, have an operable door that you can pop out in the course of play. And of course, you can slot in any of the other inserts so you could put in the hex field for like a force field look or the exposed cables for maybe an exposed wall under construction or some such. It shares this sort of the same hull curve profile as the rest of the pieces. Let's look at it fell over is the alpha inside corner. This piece is generally used on top of a floor like this it lets you do convex corner. So it lets you come around a corner like this between walls or corners. As such, it shares the same hull curve and the same uh, cabling so it have a nice continuous look when you build with it. And it has different designs on the top and the bottom. You could also use like four of these to build a, uh, a pillar, uh, two of them to make like a half pillar. Uh, you could put them on their sides to make like a uh, sort of out of some techno clutter. Uh, lots of very versatile little piece that you, to use it a lot. This is the one by one multi-module. It's technically a scatter and dressing piece, but it builds with the rest of these core pieces in such a way that it is is basically a core piece. It is a one by one footprint, an inch and a half high. It doesn't have any viscous slots, but it does have, this will be a pole accessory hole there. So you can attach like the neutron antenna or the small blaster, any of our pole accessories in there. That's a good base for any of those pieces. You can use it on top of a a floor, like such, on a one by two floor, it'll line up and it'll serve as a one by two wall if you need to offset your build by one inch. You can also use it in the same manner we use the inside corner to go around to a uh, convex corner. It also pairs very nicely with the accessory wall, which is the next piece we're going to look. And of course, you can just put it around as scatter anywhere. You can stack a bunch of these to make a barricade, it can be a storage locker and the like. This is the alpha accessory wall. Just like the other walls and corner, it is a two by two footprint, half inch thick floor, two inches high overall. It's got biscuit slots on all four sides. But the main feature on this is this one inch by one inch column in the center that boasts a biscuit slot on the front and a biscuit slot on the back. It has the same hull curve design this has the squares sculpted in, designed to look interior in this way, exterior in this way. It has the same sort of panels. These ones are hexagon styled, so it'll look uh, different in the lineup if you want to change the variety of the outside of your building, as well as it has the anchor magnet embedded in there, and you can see the one-inch squares. The reason it has this big accessory slot here, many reasons. So you can put the multi-module up against it or a console and it's a nice flat place to build and put any equipment against a wall if you want to do that in your build as well as this is a perfect place to attach any of the biscuit insert attachments like the metal corbel if you want to hang something off it as well as a catwalk it lines up really well with the stairs so you can use the stairs to get up to a second story and then connect a catwalk out like that the multi-module covers it really cleanly and then you can reveal it for a secret compartment such. Also, unlike the straight wall, it stands on its own inverted because of the one inch column. So a very versatile, useful piece, particularly great for the pipelines going up against it. And our final piece is the diagonal wall. So this is a two by two footprint that is bisected diagonally. So if you take two of them and put them back to back, they'll make a full two inch square so they can be their own backfill half inch thick floor two inch is high overall it has three biscuit slots one on each floor side and then one at the 45 degree angle on the back same design with a hull curve the continuous cabling the floor panels baked in looks like interior here 
flip it around. Looks like exterior on the outside and it has the anchor magnet embedded in there. And this is builds the same way as the corner, getting you, transitioning you in 90 degrees round, but it's doing it diagonally. So you can use it to make diagonal corridors if you have a bunch of them like, and it changes the look of your room or the outside of your structure. All right, now let's see how these pieces all build together. Okay, let's look at some interior building techniques using an alpha core mega set. So to start, we're just gonna put some pieces out, connect walls and corners, throw in a floor if we need some more space. We're just gonna make a, let's make a little three by three. Room. You just slide all your, uh, slide your pieces together, pull them together and boom, you have a little room. Of course, there's no way to get in. So let's pop out the straight, put in a, uh, put in a floor and then we'll add a, uh, last door. All right, if we wanted to extend it from here, maybe we want to have another room connected to this. Let's pop out a straight. We'll pop in another floor, pop in another door. Uh, and then from here, we can build, we can sort of build straight out using the backs of these walls as another wall. If we wanted to make it larger, we'll bump that. such but let's go let's go the other way let's make let's open up this whole room so we can pull those guys out let's pull this out let's get in here i want to make a uh i want to make a convex crib so let's put this in here we're gonna put our inside corner over there Pull these guys over here slide that guy up all right and we have a little dog leg name, something like that. We have a nice inside corner. These things always make the, uh, they make the corners look so cool. And you, of course, could build without it if you wanted to, or you could put a, uh, a multi-module in there. Uh, but the inside corner, that's what it's designed for. Let's put a, uh, let's add a feature in here, right? This is kind of a feature of this room. So let's pop out this floor and put in a, Trap door floor, like that. And then maybe let's put our console in so we have like a point of interest. All right, now let's put a, let's extend the room out again. Let's keep going, make it bigger. Let's slide this thing back. So we're just gonna pave once we take some floors, pave in floors, floors, put a wall. Let's put a, put a wall with character. Let's put a uh, accessory wall there. Mm, looking good, and then we'll put one more. Let's put an accessory wall across. So now there's characters, something like that. And if you were building on terrain trays, the magnets would hold everything in place so it wouldn't slide around. Um, also, if you wanted to, you could biscuit everything together, but I like to kind of just vessel this play and see where it goes. Let's say we want to center up this door because uh, it's off center right here. We will, we're gonna knock out the, the uh, wall there and put another floor in. We're gonna center the door, then we're gonna take a pair of multi-modules I'll put those in on either side like that. If we want them to line up better with the walls, we can rotate them around. Uh, the texture on these back and floor types isn't as pretty, so it's favoring either side, something like that. Then let's put, you know what? Let's center up a uh, trap door in here, right? So we've got our door coming in. Let's put it center a trap door in front of it. So maybe that's a, uh, I don't know what it's gonna be. Maybe it's with some electric. It's there. So normally if we had like, we were off center like that, it's not so great. So we're going to pop the, uh, pop the two by two floor out and just put a couple of one by ones like that. And you know what we could do? Let's give them some texture. So we'll flip these over, these the exterior side. So it's like, becomes like a, uh, becomes a feature. Then we're really drawing attention to that thing. And then maybe to that end, let's put, um, let's put the hex field in there make it a, uh, all right. Now let's open, where do you go from here? Let's give this, let's give this room a little more character. So we'll pop, pop these guys out with the diagonals in, something like that. Well, kind of looking neat. Now let's open up more if we want, we can we'll pop these walls out. And I want to make a nook over here. So I get some a couple of uh, corners. 
get some straight. So let's move this whole side together, something like that. And then you know what we're gonna put in here. Pull these inside corners. And now let's do a um let's do a corridor bringing us in, right? Well it's sort of a suggestion of a corridor, right? So this could be somewhere where the players could start. Maybe this is gonna be an encounter. We want to have them start here. So we have a little spot where they can stage their minis. Maybe there's more than four characters. So you need more than four squares there. So we'll put a, uh, we can just use this two by one floor to kind of extend it out a little bit. And if we want, we could make it sort of put the short step there and make it feel like we're stepping up from an alien planet to come into this as like a little base or something. Let's open it up this way. So there's somewhere to explore, right? They can kind of see the whole room when they come in this way. Uh, let's go out this way. So we're going to knock Knock these guys out. Let's put straight wall there. We'll put the floor here. Uh, let's put a couple of walls there. And an inside corner. Fill that in. Nate. So now there's a little uh right there's somewhere to explore. Over here they couldn't see around. Let's uh let's ramp the exploration up a little more. Um, to give them something that they can't see it at all to start. So we can take we take the accessory walls, right? Put two of those facing each other in a hallway. And now we have a perfect two inches between them. So we can take the blast door, we pop that in. Uh, let's throw that in. Now we put there. So now what's, they don't know what's behind that, uh, that chamber there, right? It's sealed off. Maybe we, you know, we could do, make it more exciting. Oh. We could get the, uh, let's put the hex field in there. So maybe there's something, right? This is like a little jail cell, right? So they can see through, this will be a little more translucent, right? So they'll be able to see through, maybe there's a captive in there or a MacGuffin, something they're trying to get. And then let's let's get some flavor. Let's put the electrical panel, let's put that in here. Make that look kind of neat. So like that. Oh, you know what we can do even better? Maybe this is under, put this underneath. Sort of like that. And then put this under the panel. So this is something they have to open up the access panel to get into the uh, get into the wires down below. So like that. All right, that's feeling pretty cool. Uh, and that's we could imply we've got these stairs left over in this pack. So we can imply maybe this is going up to second story, like that, or something. There could be, a, or maybe this they enter down this way and that's the exit or something like that. Kind of implies um, some more explore. Ooh, and we can we've got what else do we have in this set? We have the little. Uh, this is little metal corbel and arm. That'll be a pull accessory. We don't have the peg in it just yet, so it's got a white stick. But we can attach that to the stair and make like a little robot defender guy or something. If we wanted to go even further with this sort of the little sense of elevation here, let's pop this out. If this was all biscuited together, it would be really easy to flip, but I can kind of just do it with pressure. But imagine, oh, I don't have a ladder on there too. That works. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna biscuit this trapdoor panel on. Biscuit. Biscuit. Pop those in. And these prototypes are a little harder to use than the final one. It's in Corvanite, but you get the idea. So we're gonna flip that over. I'm gonna flip this over. Let's put one biscuit in here to help pull it together. Up you guys in there. Seems like that. The ladder should line up. Look at that. I'll pop these upside down. Boom. Now we have a uh, now we have a little raised area. Maybe we we'll put the console up there. We could put this trap door could get them down into uh, some area or something. Uh, we could also okay. Here's, let's go a bit further. Let's, let's take one more. Here, we're gonna flip these guys upside down. So these corners are flips upside down. Uh, we don't necessarily need to biscuit them in for security. And what I want to do is I'm gonna put the stairs up against it. From uh, I'm going to take this floor. And we're gonna cantilever that out, right? So we're gonna biscuit it over there first, something like that, and then over here next. So now we have this neat little. Oh, we can. Oh, I'm gonna put this little robot guy up here. Oh, you know, what? now that we have a uh, these size pistol balls, we can pop this out. We can pop this guy here. So we need this little defender, or something sensor arm. They have to feet and then we could put the uh let's put the panels out here boop and we've got one uh one final bit you could also just use this as like a uh some sort of piece of decor we got a couple of extra little bits we didn't know what to do with it but 
gives you an idea of what you could do just basic building with an Alpha Mega Core set. All right, now let's look at some exterior building techniques using the Bunker Mega Builder set. Uh, and of course you can, you can intermix interior, exterior, like all the techniques are just techniques. Like there's no wrong or right way to build. Generally for exterior stuff, you're gonna flip everything upside down you're going to biscuit things together to make sure that they stay up because uh, not everything balances perfectly. And you're going to basically just make a variety of sealed shapes that you can use to break up battlefield or create structures and the like. So you could just make a real simple 4x4 like this. In general, once you have shapes that you like, you can leave them biscuited together and use them as like semi-permanent things, right? You can just put them away and save them for the next, uh, the next battle. Uh, one of the neat things you can do so something like this is you can take the barricades. There's barricades in this set. Um, you can pop them like up against the side of buildings to give it a different profile, or you can put biscuits in the back and put them up there and they become like little fortified uh, areas, right? There's kind of like little crenellations, space, uh, space battlements. And now you have like a uh, fortified area you could defend. And you can always, I like to break up the silhouette by putting like a sort of accessory on there, whatever. So right, you make little bunkers like that. So that's a pretty basic little 4x4. Let's do one with a slightly different shape. So I'm going to take straight. Sorry. So generally, uh, I just sort of start putting together some shapes and they can start stacking them or combining them. One up, but make little bits of geometry that I enjoy and then uh, see how they kind of go together and make larger bits. So we're, this one we're going to make slightly larger, right? So we have the same. These biscuits are a little tight because of the prototypes. So some of them are loose, some of them are tight. They're not uh, as clean as the Dormanite ones, but the idea. So we're going to take a pair of floors this time, a pair of corners in the back, a pair of floors in the middle, and then throw a pair of diagonals on there and it's so close together. If that and make a uh, slightly different shaped bunker, right? So then you could combine this. You could take this and build it up instead, or something like a 45 kind of breaks up. If you could stack it, although they're kind of very similar size, you can stack it if you want to do a double high thing like that. Really, block. if you're playing shatter point or something, this gives you four inches. So now it's uh, jumping kite. We could throw some ladders on there if we want. Um, another neat thing you can do because we have the uh, we use the accessory walls in here, and this, so they have they have biscuit slots on the bottoms and on the tops. So we could take two pylons that come in the set, and you can biscuit those. Oh, one set like that, like that. And you can kind of elevate the whole thing, so it's now a extra elevated structure. What if we pop this? So you don't always have to have everything sealed, right? You could leave that open as an exposed bunker if it's like a garage or something. So I'm gonna do the straight wall. Regular ones. I wanna make it a little more open so we can get in there. If you wanted to put some models in there or hide, hide some sort of narrative MacGuffin. All right, so then you can take, uh, we took the same diagonals that we biscuited together. We can flip those over so they're in the upright position and biscuit them out. So now they're a cantilevered out, right? So now there is a little cool little open area you can put something in. And then this becomes a little fortified area up here. So you could take this as we've got that turret cone and the plasma, plasma turret, right? So you can pop that in there and it becomes like a neat sort of uh, artillery station or something. And I like the way it overhangs. There's some, some fun or play changes line of sight, but it's still kind of blocking for movement. You can't necessarily walk around there. So that's a neat little self-contained thing. And if you care about how people get up and down from things, you could pop a ladder in any of these biscuit slots like that. So now you have access to this. Thing. So let's make a bigger structure, right? We got two little guys. Let's make there. What do we have left? So we've got, we're going to save these these uh, accessory walls, so there's some neat stuff you can do with them. They, have, they stand really well. Well, let's make a, a structure that's larger. So far, everything's only been four inches wide. So if we want to make one that's a little wider, 
we are going to take our floors. Remember, the uh, this floor texture is changing, so it's going to better match uh, the pieces. The tops of the pieces is going to be more armor plated like this, so it'll look feel more cohesive. Uh, so we're taking we're taking one floor between two uh, two walls, and we're going to pop. Let's see where the corners. Do. A couple of corners, the other wall. We're gonna just get all these guys together so everything's super sturdy. Boom. And then we'll biscuit these guys to make one subunit support. So now we've got a two by three, and let's seal this thing up. So we're gonna put some diagonals on there to give it a nice profile on the front. Pim trick, put some biscuits on there. Alright, so now this. We can fly this thing around into this bigger structure. This makes a good base for like a smaller one. Right now, you have a stepped thing. It's kind of ziggurati. This is more interesting, right? Bunch of playable space on each level. There, let's give ourselves even more playable space. We still have, we've got a couple, we've got a floor and a couple of accessory walls left over so we these things I like because they stand really well upside down but we're gonna biscuit in for security so we're just gonna flip these over and have them like hang out as like cantilevered platforms right so that's one way you can easily extend your label space right you could put those on either side or something like that uh, or we still have this floor left over right? so let's take this floor biscuit it up to the side like this and it's not super secure this way, so we're going to take the accessory wall, pop the biscuit in there, pop the front. So now we have this neat sort of platform that extends out, so we have tons of playable space out there. Um, and then let's figure out, let's see, we want to put a ramp, right? So one of the neat things about the ramp is it uh, it kind of creates a bubble space, right? This is, this is not very passable, uh, one little piece kind of extends the footprint bubble of this uh, terrain feature a lot. Now let's um, let's make another ingress point here so we can just we can pop those stairs right against if we want uh, and maybe we want to break up this so that we can put those the pylons against there we can biscuit those in or if we want to use them for even more playable space we could invert these uh, we can biscuit them off to the sides like that or we could use them let's use them to extend this ramp a little more. Even more, make a big platform. So we're gonna just put a biscuit there, pop it in. Kind of look really neat, inverted. Biscuit there. Actually, let's put this one. Uh, put this one here. See how that looks. Yeah. Break up the shape a little bit, and then throw the ramp on there. As we have, then we've got some uh, barricades left over. We can just, or we can. Uh, these are multi modules. Make neat little barricades. You can use those to make like a fortified position, or maybe we. Pop this out. We can use that between to make some, uh, like a scatter, and something like that. Or we could pop it up to get even better on the site breaking. So little cluster of gear you can hide behind. Something like that. So basically, make a bunch of uh, make a bunch of structures with your core pieces, stack, adjust the shape, move them around. And suddenly you have a metal And these techniques uh, you can interchange with the interior building techniques for all sorts of. Uh, building possibilities. Hopefully this will give you an idea of the sorts of things you can build using the Bunker Mega Builder. And that's everything you need to know to get started with our Starforge core pieces. If you want to see more, check out our Starforge playlist. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on our Discord or our forums. Thank you so much for watching. And now it's back to the future, Anvil.